you are tuned in to the 10 con big seven weekend update where we bring you the seven big news stories that your left-leaning corporate media never will and that the gop establishment hopes you never hear we are the destination for tennessee's most informed and engaged conservative republicans and if you want to know about these stories maybe even before the big seven you can go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com, hit that subscribe button, and we will put state and local news stories in your inbox from a conservative perspective every day, and we're the only publication in the volunteer state doing it. Now, what kind of headlines do we have in the cornucopia of state and local politics in Tennessee? Well, let me tell you. First up, federal appeals court upholds Tennessee's ban against sex change treatments for children. How did the Tennessee... Congressional delegation vote on the Stop Gap funding bill. We're going to tell you. Representative Justin Jones is suing Cameron Sexton in federal court over expulsion. Lawsuit filed against Knox County. Knox. Knox. Put a little S on the end of that. County Sheriff's Department uh, after arrest, detainment of middle school child. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Tennessee lawmaker calls for stronger legislation to protect girls from being edged out by biological males, and it's not just about sports. We're going to get into uh, pro-life demonstrators asking for a restraining order to be lifted in Mount Juliet abortion clinic case. And finally, good news, we may be able to see the nullification bill uh, have brought back up and have an opportunity to be heard again in next year's general session where rhinos will probably stick their head in the sand as if the federal government isn't coming for everything that we own and care about. Before we get into the headlines, uh, do go to Gab, Gitter, Truth, MeWe, and Rumble, places we have not been censored. We have been turned down uh, to nothing on Facebook, and YouTube has basically said, if we, if we say again uh, that the government misstepped so do go especially to Twitter, uh, where so far it seems as if spee, uh, spee? free speech <laughs> is reigning. All right, guys, let's get right into it. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I got something from the mailbag here. Now listen, if you send in donations to P.O. Box 625, Signal Mountain 37377, and if they are slow to be deposited, it's only because I only go to the bank with those about every week, every week and a half, and if I travel. And so uh, this, this is a little bit dated, what I'm reading here, but the sentiment still holds true. <clears throat> this came in uh, the old mailbox. Enjoy the newsletters and weekly podcast. Keep up the great work, Diane from Oak Ridge. You know who you are, Dan. Thank you uh, for sending in that contribution and that kind note. We appreciate it. All right, let's get right into it. Oh, if you want to subscribe to the newsletter and you want to do it in an easy way, just text NEWS to 423-205-5600. Again, text NEWS, N-E-W-S, to 423-205-5600. Let's move on to the first story. Federal Appeals Court upholds Tennessee's ban against sex change treatment for children. It's a wonder, it's a wonder they even did it. Before long, they're going to be upholding, oh, the state's... Uh, rights to maybe keep people from beating kids to death or murdering them or, or, or putting them in unsafe situations. Amazing that this had to be appealed. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit rejected an appeal from families of transgender children. I'd like to meet these families. I bet they're real winners. I bet they've really got the interest of their kids uh, at heart as they irrevocably uh, ruin their health, uh, both mentally, uh, spiritually, and otherwise, and physically. Stating that the laws do not discriminate based on age or sex, the ruling which prohibits treatment such as puberty blockers, hormones, and surgeries applies to both Tennessee and Kentucky. In a two-to-one decision, the court said that without the laws, quote, Tennessee and Kentucky will suffer harm from their inability to enforce the will of their legislatures to further the public health considerations uh, undergirding the laws and to avoid health risk to their children. As for the public interest, Tennessee and Kentucky's interest in applying these laws to their residents and in being permitted to protect the children from health risks weigh heavily in favor of the states at this juncture. Tennessee Attorney General Jonathan Scrimetti released a statement calling the decision a, quote, win for democracy. Decisions that are not clearly resolved by the Constitution should be resolved through the people and their elected representatives, he stated. Southern Baptist uh, uh, ethicists, ethics, 
I don't know what this word is, is in here for. Brent Leatherwood praised the decision, which is amazing because Brent Leatherwood's kind of like a big rhino. But, I mean, who can't get on board with not chopping off the body parts of, of kids, even Brent Leatherwood, who is taking the Southern Baptist <laughs> organization uh, to the same sort of non-scriptural obscurity uh, that the other uh, dying congregations are heading toward uh, this guy it is a bad hire for this organization he said it is inconceivable that such uh, sensible laws uh, would be contested our culture desperately needs voices that remind individuals about the goodness of God's design for gender and how we are meant to flourish as either man or woman I can't believe Brent's even even sticking with the scripture why not just move on to other things next story how did Tennessee's congressional delegation vote on the stopgap funding bill? In order to get the stopgap funding bill, which is just an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. Here we are in this inflationary economy where Americans are having to, you know, pinch every penny, get back on a budget, do without things, but our own federal government, uh, we, we can't do a budget. We can't be responsible. We've already created this economic catastrophe for people. Let's make it worse by just spending everything into oblivion and, and driving up inflation while encumbering our future generations with debt. Sounds like a good idea. Now, former Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy brokered a deal with Democrat lawmakers on what uh, he has called a clean funding bill. The decision uh, to include $16 billion in disaster relief Funding for Ukraine as part of the stopgap bill didn't do McCarthy any favors with several other House Republicans. I'm tired of watching us send all this money over to what is a mob state, more or less, that's in a fight with another mob state. Even though the legislation passed opposition from some of the more conservative members of the House, it uh, passed in the U.S. House of Representatives uh, 335 to 91 vote, and then in the U.S. Senate by an 88 to 9 vote, both of Tennessee's U.S. Senate members Blackburn and Haggerty voted against the legislation. That's a good thing. U.S. representatives from Tennessee who voted against the legislation include uh, Tim Burchett, Scott Dejerle, Mark Green, Diana Harshberger, Andy Ogles, and John Rose. Republican reps uh, Fleischman and Kustoff joined with Tennessee Democrat Steve Cohen in voting in favor of the resolution. That's about, that's about what you need to know. Chuck's kind of liberal. He's my congressman. I don't keep up with congressional stuff. I mainly focus on state stuff. But Chuck's pretty squishy. It's pretty squishy. His voting record's a little... like He would be more liberal if he thought he could get away with it. Following a handful of House Republicans uh, joined Democrats to oust McCarthy Tuesday afternoon of Tennessee's congressional delegation, only Tim Burchett voted in favor of removing McCarthy, McCarthy rather from his leadership. However, in a 216 to 210 vote, McCarthy has vacated the speakership. Republican uh, Patrick McHenry from North Carolina uh, will temporarily, temporarily replace McCarthy in the House leadership position until the full House, uh, where Republicans hold a slot majority vote in a new speaker. I cannot believe, um, I cannot believe what's going on in Washington with spending and everything else. It's like, you know, here we are, the house is on fire and these people are throwing gasoline all over the place instead of trying to put it out. But such is the state of our government. Guys, listen, if you want to keep up with additional Tennessee conservative news above and beyond what you get at the Big 7, do tune in to my friend's uh, podcast. His name is Steve Abramowitz. You're going to have to get your get your thesaurus out for that. It's A-B-R-A-M-O-W-I-C-Z, the Mill Creek View podcast, Tennessee, on the free speech fla uh, platform of Rumble or on your favorite podcast apps like iTunes or Spotify. Catch season one of Mill Creek View CEO special. A new episode comes out every Monday at 9 o'clock where Steve interviews great American business owners doing good business. Steve also recently interviewed J.C. Bowman, CEO of the Professional Educators of Tennessee, who shared some insight into the problems of Tennessee's education system. I'm going to tune into that one. I did not know that you had done that. I've been a little detached. I'm focused on my painting business right now, so I apologize. And if you're interested in getting caught up on Florida, Mill Creek View has a podcast hosted by Kat Stancil. And if you're interested in Washington State, and who isn't, uh, they have a podcast hosted by Vincent Cavallari. So do go to uh, listen to Steve Abramowitz. And I'm very interested in this uh, J.C. Bowman interview. I'm going to tune into that uh, this weekend sometime when I am working out in the yard, which I'm going to tell you about at the end of the uh, podcast, which I'm pretty excited about. Next story. 
Representative Justin Jones sues House Speaker Cameron Sexton in federal court over expulsion. Democrat uh, State Representative Justin Jones has filed a federal lawsuit against Republican House Speaker Cameron Sexton, alleging that several of Sexton's actions toward Jones were unconstitutional. In the lawsuit, Jones accuses Sexton of, quote, disparate racial treatment and of violating Jones' First Amendment rights uh, to the freedom of speech. Now listen, Justin. If you're gonna if you're gonna throw stones at Cameron Sexton for trying to censor speech, you're gonna have to get in a long line, and the conservatives would probably be in the front of that line. Sexton's a big fan of censorship. He wants all the dissenting voices uh, in Tennessee that talk about his terrible record uh, to be shut up, and so to to watch him take this and put it towards you is is of no no surprise to conservatives in the room. Back to the story. Jones' claim of disparate racial treatment uh, stems from several incidents in which Jones claims that he was treated differently from white legislators, especially regarding his expulsion from the House earlier in the year. Jones says that he was expelled, but Representative Gloria Johnson, who is white, was allowed to remain in the legislature even though she engaged in the exact same speech and protest. Jones says that he has yet to be reinstated to his previous committee assignments, even though Johnson uh, was allowed to return to hers. The lawsuit also claims that Jones was denied the right to speak uh, and to be heard after House Republicans voted to silence him during the legislative special session in August. Sexton had called Jones out of order twice, saying that he got off the current topic, which was against the new rules that the House adopted for the special session. I think it's kind of funny that, that the House Republicans that stepped in it so epically, like the clown show, that was that special session uh, this summer. An, an utter PR disaster for the Republican Party, a tremendous victory for Democrats and the left-leaning media, uh, that, that, that he wanted to put new rules in place, which he always loves to put new rules in place that just shut people up and shut people down. That's Sexton's m- modus operandi. So this, this is going to be a recurring theme as long as he's in power. Jones alleges that this was a violation of his First Amendment rights under the new changes to the, quote, rules of order of Tennessee House of Representatives violates the U.S. and Tennessee Constitution. In a Tennessee um, uh, press release on Tuesday, Jones says he is bringing a lawsuit against Sexton to, quote, hold him accountable for his anti-democratic and unconstitutional actions. Next story. More lawsuits. Lawsuit filed against Knox County Sheriff Department after arrest detainment of middle school child. The parents of a student who attends Farragut Middle School are suing Knox County for civil rights violations against their child who was arrested for making offhand comments about, quote, stealing a plane and crashing it into the school to a group of other boys. According to the lawsuit, a teacher overheard the comments where the 12- to 13-year-old kids were engaging in a game of verbal one-upmanship and turned in one of the students. The presence of a Knox County Sheriff's deputy uh, the child was interrogated and his backpack searched. Uh, reports indicated the deputy, uh, deputy removed his body cam before the search was conducted. When the boy realized he was being interrogated, he refused to answer any more questions. Their kid's pretty smart. Whoever raised this kid, I mean, he, maybe he wants to fly a, a plane <laughs> into the school, which I assume it was just the running of the mouth. I, I think about me at that age. There was probably no stupid thing that I, I did not do. At some point. Um, but back to the story here. Uh, we refuse to answer any more questions. That's a, that's often a very good... When the government comes calling, you, you need to go find a lawyer in most cases. They do not have your interest at, at heart in many cases. Um, it was at this point that a call was made to the child's father who was instructed by the principal to compel his child to answer the questions the child was being asked. The father of the child told the deputy and the principal that he would not allow his son to answer any questions without an attorney or himself present. Another smart individual. The deputy then informed the father that the child did not answer the question. The child would be handcuffed and arrested and removed from the school to a detention center. The father uh, wasn't told was that the deputy then perp-walked his child out of the school, handcuffed, and proceeded to detain the child in the backseat of his patrol car for hours in front of the school without being given access to a phone. Mm. You give somebody a badge, you might want to give them some good decision-making capabilities, too. This gentleman obviously sounds like he didn't have very good ones. Later uh, in, in the day, a transport van received custody of the minor who was still handcuffed and was transported to the juvenile detention center. The report mentions that the child was transported along with two adult detainees being delivered to the county jail. 
being that this occurred late on a Friday, the boy was held for the entire weekend, 72 hours, without access to his parents and attorney uh, or any explanation why he was being detained. Knox County Sheriff's Office, what kind of show are you running over there? The family of the child is asking for uh, compensatory and punitive damages for violation of the child's rights to due process and against unreasonable seizure. It's important to note that many of the reports uh, at the same time of the incident portrayed the comments made by a middle schooler as threats of mass violence without adding any context to ensure people understood there was no attempted uh, event and that even closely resembled the events of the Covenant School or any other sort. Government behaving badly. I mean, kids are going to behave badly. You kind of expect kids to behave badly. You don't expect justice systems and, and officers of the law to, to, to step in it up to their ankles um, like that. But it is what happens. Next story. Tennessee's lawmakers call for stronger legislation to protect girls from being edged out by biological males, and it's not just about sports. Last weekend at Houston High School in Germantown, a biological male using female pronouns, wearing female clothing, took what would have been traditionally a girl's spot in their homecoming court. I just don't even know what to say. Now, when I was in school, I, I think I remember hearing of, like, goats and dogs and other... It's funny, right? You vote you vote something onto the homecoming court that is, that is not traditional, mainly as a prank or a gag. And, you, you know, it's just funny. But this is just sad. Republican State Senator Brent Taylor said he was contacted by many concerned parents who are asking whether the school district can promote this sort of activity considering all the legislation that has been passed recently. Taylor said there has been no response from the school. Uh, Taylor said, quote, absent some express, uh, explanation uh, or rebuke of a young man masquerading at a girl at the Houston High School homecoming court, it would appear that the Germantown Municipal School District not only tolerates this, but obviously they support and celebrate it. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Germantown Municipal School District supports and celebrates it. You let something like this go on, a, a public, ceremonial, all-eyes-on-you thing, that's these liberal leftist uh, educators all over Tennessee. And Bill Lee is allowing some of the biggest leftists uh, to be put in the Tennessee Department of Education, which is just a crap show. There's not another organization of government in Tennessee that has a worse track record than the Department of Education in both leadership and results. And Lee just keeps getting the CRT and the DEI specialists just entrenched. He's cramming them in every nook and cranny that he can so that your kids will be indoctrinated. He does not give a rip about that stuff. I don't care what how many Facebook posts he puts out there. He has not defended, stood up for driven any conservative agenda in his years in government. And he will leave just being another crony corporatist. That's, that's going to be his uh, corporate welfare will be his big achievement. And, and, of course, destroying Tennessee's economy and civil rights during the pandemic. That's the legacy that he will leave behind for those that are paying attention. Taylor's major concern was a common one it is the war has been waged against biological females in the last few years, and that was the opportunity to participate in what would have been a wholly appropriate activity, specifically for a biological female, but was set aside in lieu of a biological male. And this is true. My wife was the homecoming queen. Okay? I married the homecoming queen. Not of my school, but my wife was the homecoming queen. And uh, I could not imagine when you are a little girl and you've got an opportunity to, to maybe be voted by your peers for something like that, and it's like a milestone moment in your career to have some dude in a dress take your spot and, and as an administrator or a principal or whomever is responsible for this, be like, oh, that's great. That's a good thing. That's, that's, this, this aligns with our values, but that is your education system in Tennessee. Taylor said, quote, once again, this type of virtue signaling uh, to the gay community only hurts girls. This young man's presence in the homecoming court prevented a young woman from representing her class. This is truly despicable. Taylor also points out that the response from the district would be much different if the immutable characteristic that was being imitated was race and not biological sex. Amen. Now, what is wrong with being in blackface? You're just pretending to be something you're not. Who cares? 
why can't you go around in blackface? If you can go around in woman face or man face, aren't we supposed to be our authentic selves? Cultural, racial appropriation? What about sex appropriation? No. No, no, no. Taylor also points out the response in the district. Uh, it is not what it should be. Quote, there is no school board in the state that would allow someone to identify as an African American and then show up in blackface, much less celebrate it. Taylor said he has spoken to others in the General Assembly that would agree with the prospect of a possible legislative solution to such an issue as this. And as I have mentioned previously, guys, I think Brent's, and I'd like to talk to Brent. Brent, if you'd like to do an interview, closed circuit transmission, anybody that knows Brent, I've liked and admired some of the stuff that he has said and done since he's been up in the legislature. Uh, have him call me. Uh, email me. I would be happy to interview him. But, as I have said before, and I will say again, the big issue with all this legislation that they're having to pass, we don't want critical race theory in the schools. Uh, you, you don't have to use kids' pronouns. Women can't, men can't be voted in as women on homecoming courts, whatever it is, right? There's a whole litany. Litany, all the educational funding rejiggering, which did absolutely nothing, all the millions and billions that we throw at education and all the programs and the mascots and the graphic design and the PR spin work that goes to cover up the terrible, awful results. The fact that we have to even pass laws to prevent this stuff or restrict it just tells you how broken and probably irredeemable the government education system is in our state, and that is why parents need to get their kids out of these places, and they need to, uh, legislators need to just give taxpayers their money back and let them send their school uh, age children to their educational institution of choice with no strings attached because the government corrupts anything it touches. Guys, listen, we are coming up right now on our third anniversary this October's our third anniversary. It has been three long, grueling, personally rewarding, yet financially not rewarding at all years here at the Tennessee Conservative News. And we need your support. Guys, if you want me to keep doing this from now on, it is a tough job. It is in many ways thankless. Please send in your money. <laughs> Go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com slash support. And give until it hurts. Just till, till you've got massive chest pains, you hit the send button. If you don't think you need it, immediately need to call our offices and say, I gave too much. You're not giving enough. TennesseeConservativeNews.com slash supporter. You can send your checks, which we do take, to P.O. Box 625. P.O. Box 625, six and a quarter. P.O. Box 625, Signal Mountain, Tennessee, 37377. And those are easy numbers to remember. 37377. And when you donate... Any amount, we will send you these bumper stickers. One of them says, Stop Feeding the Rhinos. And boy, are the rhinos in Tennessee well-fed by the left-leaning corporations and special interests that ask them to do bidding that is contrary to the will of the GOP primary voters, and they listen to them all the time, and then they act in their interest. Uh, don't California My Tennessee bumper sticker, because we do not want any of that. And we also send you a directory of your state reps and your state senators. Jason, if you remember... Uh, would you send me an email of that updated directory? I need to print one out so I can show it as a visual aid. If you give $50 or more, we will send you this proud Tennessee conservative tumbler. Hand wash only. Hand wash only because it, this deserves this deserves the uh, tender love and care that you would give to, oh, say, a holy chalice, okay, that, that was used by St. Benedict, uh, was sipped out of, whatever, you would definitely treat it with reverence and respect. So we will send you this proud Tennessee conservative uh, koozie and this proud Tennessee conservative, uh, I just said koozie. I'm repeating myself. We're going to send you this koozie. We'll send you that cup. But the main thing that we're going to send you when you give, and I will move on, is a sense of accomplishment. That is really what you get when you give. When I ask most people, you know, what have you done in the last 60, 90 days to advance conservatism in a way that you can measure that's actually effective and functional? They can't tell me, but I'm telling you here. If you give to the Tennessee Conservative News, dollar for dollar, 
We do more good per dollar with the least amount of waste of any organization. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I work for free. Okay? And so when you give us a dollar, buddy, you get a dollar's worth of impact. There's no, there's no uh, bulky administration. There's no fluff. There's no frills. I do the news with a webcam uh, in my office at the house. <laughs> and we're going to try to step up our, our audiovisual game here before too long. i got a gentleman that I'm talking to. Hey, while we're plugging stuff, if you've not gotten the Rhino Report, R-I-N-O Report.net, R-I-N-O Report.net, go there, download that puppy. And when you do, you'll get not only the Rhino Report, which is a fantastic revelation of the fact that our uh, Republican leadership in Tennessee is not conservative at all, vote by vote. Uh, you also get access to uh, the last year's Rhino Report, which I am sure that people that are in elected office are just so excited uh, that we make this information so readily and easily available to GOP primary voters and subscribers uh, who want to hide their record. Let's move on to the next news story. Pro-life demonstrators ask for a restraining order to be lifted in Mount Juliet abortion clinic case. Operation Save America's request for a restraining order to be lifted in a case involving a Mount Juliet, Tennessee abortion clinic has been denied. A federal appeals court voted 2-1 to one on Friday to uphold the injunction that bars the pro-life group and anyone associated with them from protesting outside of the clinic. Seems odd. The group stated that the case is now moot since the U.S. Supreme Court decided last year to give decision-making regarding the abortions um, of children back to the state. When that happened, Tennessee's trigger law went into effect, essentially shutting down abortion clinics across the state. There's no longer a reason to protest outside of CARFM in Mount Juliet. CARFM, the pro-life group, argue. Imagine having a job in an abortion clinic or being an abortion doctor. It's one thing to just kind of sit on the sidelines when little babies are killed, but it's another thing to like adopt the philosophy of it. And I guess these would be the same people that, you know, if, if we were back in the scriptures, they'd be working for Baal. You know, there'd be a priestess or a priest of Baal, and they'd be, you know, hey, hey, let's talk about sacrificing your kids to Baal. It's really, it's really good. It's a good thing to do. It's, you know, it's good for your health. It's good for society. And, uh, I mean, these are the folks, right? Like the devil just uses the same people over and over again. He dresses them up in different clothes and sends them to do the same things in slightly different culturally acceptable ways. With the restraining order still in place, the case will continue in federal court in Nashville before Tennessee's law took effect last year. Protesters with uh, Operation Save America both entered the clinic and gathered on nearby sidewalks and parking lots outside during a protest in July 2022. In court, CARFIM argued that the protest was in violation of the FACE Act, while legal representation for the demonstrators said the group did not obstruct the doors of the clinic in any meaningful way, according to the DOJ website. Quote, the FACE Act is not about abortions. The law protects all patients, providers, and facilities that provide reproductive health services. This includes pro-life pregnancy counseling services. Yeah, people go and protest those because... It is so controversial to try to help a woman uh, who's unexpectedly pregnant bring her healthy baby into the world. Back to the quote. In any other pregnancy uh, support facility providing reproductive health care, attorneys for CareFem said Friday that staff of the clinic continued to provide other reproductive services and still remain at risk, arguing that the injunction against Operation Save America should remain in place. All right, we've got some good news here. Good news. Nullification bill may have opportunity to be heard again in next year's general session. A bill sponsored by Senator Janice Bowling. She needs to be the Speaker of the House. And the Senate. <laughs> She's in the Senate. She needs to be the Speaker of the Senate. She needs to be the Lieutenant Governor. She was the Deputy Lieutenant Governor. But when you do things that are conservative, when you act in a conservative way, as Senator Janice Bowling did during the pandemic, probably the number one leader uh, in the effort to get our rights back from rhinos that allowed our rights just to be trampled, the leader uh, has got some good news for us here, says in 2023 there's an opportunity for a rehearing in the general session. Now, the nullification bill was killed— it was either killed or it didn't even make it to committee last time around. I don't know what it is about state lawmakers that don't want 
a nullification process to be put in place so when that we have federal overreach, we can just say we're not going to participate in that. That's the whole point of having separate states and a weak federal government. We've got it all wrong. It is not how the founders intended it. Janice Bowling's trying to correct it. The rhinos in both the leadership and on the committee structure in the Senate and in the House, they just want that. I guess they just want us to be on that corrupting federal teat forever for any and all things. That's how Bill Lee is, right? He'll stand up for, you know, he, he wouldn't even give the constitutional rights uh, that he gave to other Tennesseans to federal workers or contractors or healthcare people. Like he, he's just, there's some federal dollars or some corporate dollars. Oh no, no, rights are secondary. Maybe not even secondary, maybe tertiary. Janice Bowling does not feel that way. The Restoring State Sovereignty Through Nullification Act establishes a process by which the General Assembly may nullify any unconstitutional federal statute, regulation, agency, or executive order. The bill's aim is to codify in the 10th Amendment uh, protect the sovereignty of the state and its rights to nullify any federal action that is unconstitutional in 2022. Bowling uh, proposed a bill whose main purpose would be to, quote, end Tennessee's practical participation with federal actions that it finds constitutionally uh, uh, out of whack, violent, but it did not make it through the legislative session. On March 16, 2022, Bowling spoke uh, about the 10th Amendment and states' rights during a government operations committee meeting prompted uh, by when she said there were, quote, many attempts at strong overreach of the federal government during the pandemic. Earlier this year, the bill was reintroduced, but again, failed to make it through the entire session. I wish we'd had the, the, the names of the people who voted against it. Jason. Outlined in Section 7 of the bill were the basic premise of the legislation that stated, quote, bills must be passed by both houses of Congress and then approved by the president or presidential veto by Congress. This is the only method of lawmaking under the Constitution of the United States, contrary to popular opinion. Federal executive orders, federal agency rules and regulations, and federal opinions are not laws at all, and they certainly are not settled law or the supreme law of the land. Thank you, Ms. Bowling. If the men in Republican leadership had a third of the conservative convictions, backbone and record of Janice Bowling, they might actually act like men occasionally instead of like a bunch of uh, corporate floozies. What's going on this weekend, ladies and gentlemen? Most important part of the podcast. So, I'm about to leave here momentarily to go eat uh, an early dinner with my in-laws and then hopefully go, if the weather holds, It has been raining here today to the Three Sisters Bluegrass Festival. I hope to get to go today and tomorrow for at least a little while both days because I love good live Appalachian music. It is an art form that I hope to see endure and and live on. That's why I do support the Walden Civic League. That's why I do support um, the Signal Mountain Opry and try to go anytime I can. So I'm doing that. I am uh, building a makeshift woodshed. Uh, out of just whatever I can find around the house. Uh, so I'll be working on that this weekend. Need to have a desk assembled and put in my office. I've been just working out of a chair for almost a year. These things are slow. You move into a new place. These things are slow. And so that is the plan. And I've got some places in my yard where the grass isn't growing because we're on real kind of rocky soil, clay soil up here on the mountain. So I'm going to root around with some seed and some topsoil and a hard rake and see if I can get some grass to grow and just generally mill around the house. And we will probably go to church Sunday night would be my guess. We may go down to the Bluegrass Festival, sit around for a little while, and then go to uh, go to church and then just spend Sunday around the house. My wife and kids are about to go on a kind of an, uh, an American history, revolutionary history tour of Boston with our church. Sadly, yours truly is not able to go because I've got work to do in my paying business. Um, it has been, it is just busy, 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 busy. I got uh, a major hire that has come on board that's, that's going to be exceptionally helpful, but as all of you know, especially if you're a business owner, when you bring on a major hire, that means major work for you as the owner. And uh, this is a long time coming. This is something I should have done uh, something I prayed about for a long time for somebody to just send somebody, uh, for, for the Lord to send somebody into my life that can help me with my business in the areas where I'm just not as strong or as committed or as thorough as I should be. And so that's what I'm doing. So this is, you know, this has been, for Brandon Lewis, it's been about three years of like it seems 
unending change of various kinds from moving my house, moving my office, selling my old house, selling my old office, moving into a new office, which I'm not even moved into. I got a, I got a desk standing on its end in a little room and I mainly work from home. I don't know if I'll ever go down there, but I probably will. I got to get it all set up. Uh, guys, if you did go to the Conservative Candidates Academy, I'm going to try my best to get everything out to you, the recordings of all that. And uh, if you're thinking about running for political office, I will close with this. Uh, it is my intention to make that course available for purchase uh, because we really need to make sure that anybody that's running for office as a conservative in Tennessee, that they have the, at least the foundational knowledge about what campaigning is, what it isn't, what works, what doesn't, what's wasteful, what's helpful, what to use, and who to use in order to win and how. And so that Conservative Candidates Academy course, it is my sincere hope, uh, we will have up for sale through the Conservative Candidates Academy here shortly, before too long. So stay tuned for that. And so if you are running for office, by all means, email me. Um, I have been toying around with the idea, and we will probably do a, a completely different type of endorsement process than what we have done in the past here at the Tennessee Conservative News as it relates to office seekers nearing election, we are going to um, put together a little survey, an issue survey, have people fill that thing out so we can have them on record saying where they stand. Now, if they'll do that after they get elected, who knows? It's anybody's guess. I've been wrong more often than I have been right. And we're going to require that people go through that course. Because if, you, if, if you're not trained, I'm not putting any time, energy, or effort into your campaign. I'm just not going to do it. It's kind of like uh, when I used to work with or around the, uh, the Young Guns program, you know, they required that you raise $100,000 before they would ever even help you because if you didn't meet this kind of minimum requirement, it just kept a lot of false starts from happening. And so that's what we're looking at. That's what we're looking at. What else is new? I guess that's about it. There's been our, our uh, oldest Went and shadowed at a potential new school. That's new because uh, we're in a school that ends at fifth grade, so we got to make sixth grade decisions, and it's very difficult uh, as a parent. And you got a kid that's school age. Number one, I, I'm just not going to send them to the public schools. I'm not going to do it. I don't want the indoctrination, uh, even though we're in the best school district up in Hamilton County, up on Signal Mountain. I just don't want the indoctrination. I don't want the, the, the state influence. Everything that I, that I see and the inflexibility, the lack of responsiveness. I mean, you can complain to your blue in the face to somebody in government schools. What are you going to do? I mean, they're, they're a monopoly. They, they don't really care to listen to you. And I think it's important, in my opinion, to have uh, your kids in, in school with other kids whose parents at least are somewhat like-minded. Does that eliminate everything? Does that prevent every issue? No. But it does a lot. It does a lot. Uh, and I do believe in smaller class sizes um, and a focus on academics that doesn't include all the garbage that so often comes along uh, with public schooling and the lack of flexibility. And our youngest uh, has started going to preschool, which she's warming up to. She's warming up to. She is a homebody. She is a mama's girl. And she really just wants to stay at home with mama all day long. And so uh, we, we let her play hooky today from preschool uh, because Sissy is out on spring break, fall break, one of the breaks. And so we're going to try to have some fun while we can at Casa de Lewis uh, with Kiki and Papa and, and other family members. So that's it, guys. That's my exciting crazy life uh yard work school stuff old music church it's kind of boring but i like it i like a good uh boring and predictable routine i can settle right into one and i am also just as i'm yammering here uh i'm looking forward to the holidays i really am looking forward to christmas i love the christmas season um and i'm looking forward to cold weather for at least a little while i love it for about a month when it gets chilly and after that i'm longing for the summer but I am chopping the wood, dragging it out of the property here. Um, it gives me something to do, and it you know you burn a few calories, maybe build a few muscles while you're doing it. It's worth doing. So, guys, what are y'all doing? 
Tell me what you're going, what's going on in the comment section. What are you doing this weekend? What do you think of these stories? Uh, do, please. Here we are at the end. You're going to have to find something else to listen to as soon as I stop yammering, which could, could last another 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> would you please give me a five-star review on Spotify, especially iTunes? Like, if you are a routine listener and you have never reviewed this podcast, do that. It's very, very helpful. It helps other people uh, find us, as I told you, I think, uh, weekend before last. I don't know, did Delia fill in for me last week? I don't even remember. She did a good, a great job interviewing that guy, uh, the author of uh, Fauci's Fiction. You should check that out. It was the, the podcast that preceded this one. She did a great job. But uh, as I said, you know, our podcasts have actually started showing up in the rankings. Like showing up. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a good good thing. Because, I, mean, I mean, it shows up nationally but it's really only people that care about politics in Tennessee. So that's a good thing. So continue to share this online. Tell your friends about it. Post in the comment section. Retweet it. Whatever you got to do to get this content in front of people, especially on Twitter. If you see our videos on Twitter, uh, if you see our posts on Twitter, reshare those. Comment on those. Uh, that is where we really get the most traction and where a lot of our lawmakers uh, like to go to lie. And so it's helpful if we have a good following on Twitter of folks that actually keep up with things and know the truth. Brandon Lewis here with the Tennessee Conservative Big 7. Thank you so much for your support, for your letters, for your notes, for your emails, for your phone calls. Thank you for your checks and your monthly donations because you are the handful that keep us moving in the right direction. You are the conservatives that put your money where your mouth is, and I'm very, very thankful for you and all that you do. Guys, be good. Take care. Talk to you next week. See ya.